Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on my review of the 2023 Mazda MX-5, better known as the beloved Mazda Miata. The Miata MX-5, as Mazda called it, has been around since 1989. The Miata is a cult class of your car. If you know, you know exactly why. If you don't, I'll explain. Miatas are the only cars you have fun driving under the speed limit. They have sharp handling because they're so light, they're really easy to drive. They're basically street legal go-karts. On top of that, if you're into racing, there's a huge Miata community of racers and loads of aftermarket parts. Miatas are known for being reliable and easy to work on, and they hold on to their resale value year after year. Miatas also have an excellent fuel economy, making them surprisingly affordable to own and operate. The MX-5 is available in two convertible variants, the more affordable soft top and the more expensive retractable fastback or RF hardtop. The soft top is removable by hand once you pull a lever behind you, however with the hardtop you press a button and the roof panels disassemble and move into the trunk. Mazda lent me the soft top for review. If you're only looking to drive your Miata in the summer months or you live in a warmer climate, the soft top is probably good enough. However, if you want to drive your long or want a bit more cabin isolation, go with the hardtop. In this review, I'm going to be going over the Miata's notable features, interior, and performance and handling before I conclude my final opinions of this beloved convertible. The Mazda Miata is a really cool looking vehicle and the seats too, it's not exactly the most practical of vehicles. Before I jump deeper into the Mazda Miata's interior, I want to go over some of the Miata's crowd favorite features. The Miata is available with either a 6-speed manual or 6-speed automatic transmission. Before I go any further, if you're curious about which transmission you should buy, get the manual. Even if you can't drive a manual, still buy the manual and have someone drive it off the lot for you even if that's your mom. You'll thank me later. The Miata is a rear wheel drive vehicle and the 6-speed manual transmission is godly on the Miata. The Miata makes manual driving so much fun because you feel the raw engine revs right through the gear shifter and because it only weighs 2300 pounds, if you make a mistake with the clutch, it's really forgiving. The gear shifts feel so clean and throws are so perfectly balanced that nearly anyone can learn to drive a manual transmission on a Miata. In fact, the Miata will even tell you what gear it thinks you should be in for maximum fuel efficiency and easy learning. In this case, you should shift up from 2nd to 3rd gear. Since the Miata only has around 181 horsepower from its Skyactiv 2 liter inline 4 engine, a manual transmission really lets you ring up the gearbox and pull every ounce of power out of it. With an automatic transmission, the computer will shift the gears for you and you lose that connection with your Miata, or as Mazda calls it, Jin Batai in Japanese. That said, regardless of transmission, the Miata is super fuel efficient and easy on your wallet at the pump. I was getting just over 6 liters per 100 kilometers in mixed driving, which is basically nearly 40 miles per gallon for our US friends. If you just want to save money on gas, the Miata is not a bad choice. So now that we've talked about Miata's awesome transmission and powertrain, let's jump inside and finish up the interior. The Miata may look tiny if you're tall your head might brush up against the roof. Then again, that's why all Miatas are sold as convertibles. Once the roof is off, headroom becomes infinite anyway. That said, leg room is surprisingly room and even if you're 6 feet tall, you actually have enough room to stretch your legs out. There's a lot of room where the pedals are making it very easy to drive. When it comes to the seating, the Miata is actually surprisingly comfortable. Even though the seats look cramped and they don't have a lot of reclining ability, I actually had no trouble on long road trips. Counterintuitively, I actually felt the seats were ergonomic and form-fitting which definitely seems mind-boggling, at least upon first impression. Seats are cloth from my review model, but they are heated. Compared to more luxurious Mazda models like the CX-50, the Miata is bare bones in the interior. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but just remember that the Miata is not competing with the Mercedes-Benz S-Class convertible. You're not getting air scarf, however if the Miata detects that it's cold inside, it will smartly automatically turn on the heated seats and warm the airflow. Most panels are hard plastic, which is fine to me in this context. Buttons in the center console that are used to control the infotainment system and volume are standard Mazda buttons and nothing fancy. For example, the infotainment system is only a small 7-inch non-touchscreen, it's not a super beautiful fancy display. It gets the job done with your media, phone and vehicle settings, but navigation is a premium feature that you're going to have to pay for and it won't be standard. The good news is that sound is provided by a premium Bose sound system as some of the speakers are in the seats for better acoustics. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard though, which is nice if you prefer a phone-based infotainment system. Now the Miata does have some tiny downsides. Because it's tiny, there's not a lot of room to store stuff and there is no normal center console to put your purse or personal items. In fact, there isn't even a glove compartment in the Miata, so your license registration is going to have to go in a spot next to the cup holders between the seats. If you need to carry a lot of stuff, the Miata isn't going to cut it. And the trunk space isn't particularly massive either, and it's going to be a struggle to put big suitcases inside the trunk. 
If you're single, it's fine with two seats, but it's not exactly a family-friendly car. Overall, the Miata is still plenty good, but the driving and handling is really where this vehicle shines. This thing is fun to drive even under the speed limit. Right away, the hands down best way to drive the Miata is with the top down. Driving the Miata with the top down is so much fun because you really get to experience the world around you. If you're by the ocean, you smell it, you can hear the waves crash against the beach. When you're driving a car with the windows up, you don't really experience the world around you except for what you see. Driving a convertible is the closest experience to riding a motorcycle while still being on four wheels. Now when it comes to the actual handling, the Miata is still loads of fun to drive. Because it only weighs 2,300 pounds, the Miata has super responsive handling. When you turn the wheels, the car just instinctively follows lines and there's loads of road feel through the steering wheel. You can just feel the tires grip the pavement below you, which makes driving so much more enjoyable. The Miata is also super low to the ground with a low center of gravity. So when you actually drive around the bends, the car is super flat and suspension hugs the road, making the Miata feel very playful and fun to drive. Now in 2022, Mazda introduced the Kinetic Posture Control or KPC. What I'm told KPC will do is that in tight, high G maneuvers, the Miata will apply a slight rear brake to tighten turns and improve performance. Did I notice it? Well, I didn't push the car hard enough to find out, but either way, Miata is still rocking the road. On the engine side, the 181 horsepower is plenty for the Miata, and depending on how hard you want to trash your clutch, you can do 0 to 16 in around 6.5 to 7 seconds. The manual transmission is also excellent as I said before, I love the feeling of raw engine revs through the gear shifter when I shift up or down the gears. Thanks to the light body weight, the engine has no trouble pulling the Miata out of the corners and up incline hills. As I said before, driving the speed limit with the Miata is actually fun, unlike most other cars. Overall, the Miata is just a playful and fun vehicle to drive. It makes sense why people would want to drive these things all year long. So now that we're at the end of the review, let's recap. If you want a super fun car to drive with the godly transmission that won't break the bank, the Miata may be for you. Just be aware the interior is standard fare and there's not a lot of storage room or flexibility if you need more than two seats. That said, people who want to drive a Miata know exactly what they're getting into and I can confidently affirm what the Miata community has said for years. These things are awesome. Once you get one, you'll never go back to anything else. Thanks again so much for watching. Hope you learned something new. Please leave a like or subscribe if you did. Have a great rest of your day.